here's a nice question for you all. What does the R36 Eruptor in Helldivers 2 and the bolt gun in Warhammer 40k share in common? If you answer they are weapons of mass destruction, then please stand by for the nearest democracy officer as you are clearly wrong. However, what they do both share is that they fire highly explosive rounds that upon impact will completely destroy enemies of many ranks. They are also used as a kind of secondary weapon with how they are designed and function. So today, we're going to review this slow but powerful priming weapon, what you need to be aware of, and truly ask the age old question, how the hell do you use this? So to get this weapon, you first need to get the Democratic Destination War Bond for 1000 super credits, and then you need to have 60 medals to unlock it. In terms of the stats, these are the current weapon stats as shown. Damage, 380. Fire rate, 25. Capacity, 5. Recoil, 75. This weapon is a slow bolt action firing rifle that at best can be compared to the anti-material rifle for a slow sluggish movement but high precision damage and area damage it provides. You can't use this as a traditional primary weapon as although it's been placed as one, upon using it you'll soon realise it's more of a secondary support weapon for specific roles. It can be used as a primary if you wish as its damage and range will give you the edge you require but its clunkiness will also be a downfall if you don't come properly equipped. As the explosive primary class has only been added, there is only one weapon it can be similarly compared to, which is the exploding crossbow. Now on screen you can see that in terms of stats, the crossbow is much better in nearly all but one category. You may think at this point that the crossbow is generally the superior weapon to use here, but don't let that fool you. The crossbow has to account gravity with its shots, so more patience is required for the user. On top of it, it also can't close bug holes or fabricators, so in terms of it playing a multi rolling game, the Eruptor comes out on top. However, both are good to use, so use them and just enjoy them. So when it comes down to a weapon's pros, usually we will look at its damage rate against enemies, or how much ammo it holds, or what special passive effect it may have. But the Eruptor is a one and done type weapon. Its explosive projectiles can easily take out a small group of weak enemies like raiders and scavengers that are tightly grouped up together, which should tell you how strong its explosive damage is. The gun is also very good at killing heavier targets like devastators, spewers, and is one of the best weapons to use against the automaton scout striders or brute commanders in Helldivers 2. It can punch through heavy armor, which is a shame with how strong it is, but it can destroy objectives like bot fabricators, bug holes, and illegal broadcast towers, etc. I like to think of this weapon as an explosive sniper rifle that hits hard like a 50 cal, but also has an explosive AOE capable of taking out multiple targets before they notice. It has a blast radius of around 8 meters, which is fairly good size with how grouped up enemies are, so if you need to help out your teammate who is being chased by a large swarm of enemies, one shot from the rifle will reduce the enemy's size by quite a considerable amount. In fact, its damage is so great that using this against a charger's weak point is actually a viable strat as long as you know what you're doing and can react at a moment's notice. And lastly, the weapon's AoE shrapnel effect is also quite powerful depending on how you use it. But see, most explosive weapons upon impact will detonate the charge and kill whatever is nearby. The Eruptor is the same, but its AoE effect allows the shrapnel charges from the explosive to take out additional enemies depending on where it goes. If I was to fire this weapon behind a building where I know enemies are waiting by, by me launching this weapon directly behind said building, the shrapnel charge alone should be enough to kill them, or just weaken them. Now this does require practice of the user, as the weapon has a high chance of ricocheting off the ground instead of colliding with the given area it should be aiming for, which can also be used to your objective. However, even with that in mind, it does expand the weapon's performance even more the longer the user uses the weapon. In higher difficulty, I can see this being helpful with preventing ambushes from occurring. Now, as an explosive rifle, this thing is very, very slow to fire, reload, and also recenter upon being used. Considering the rifle's low ammo capacity, cumbersome handling, and low rate of fire, you want to bring a machine gun, a Star Wars, or even an Arc Fur as your support weapon, as although it can be used as a primary like mentioned before, you will not do well when using it against a swarm of fast moving enemies. 
They treat the weapon as a strategy more than a primary weapon, and from there it will adapt to your loadout fairly easier upon further usage. Now some final thoughts and tips in terms of using the weapon. Uh, this weapon upon me using it has performed extremely well in quite a lot of environments, and depending on your setup, you can really make a good number of loadouts that would excel well for different playstyles. One good all-rounder setup I've been using quite a lot is the heavy armor set with the fortification perk, a machine gun stratagem, and the laser rover backpack. The fortification armor perk would support your chosen machine gun of choice, and ideally this would be considered the main primary weapon, while a secondary effect of reducing 50% explosive damage while using the eruptum will more or less allow the user to survive up close explosive encounters. The laser rover on your back will support your outgoing damage in your day to day actions while also giving you that extra bit of protection while reloading your main weapons. And then lastly, if the laser rover is not your ideal choice, then having the ammo pack would benefit you more, with giving you enough ammo to help support and recover your rubbed and machine gun ammo on hand. You don't need a lot to support this weapon, as it can work with whatever you have in mind, but this simple loadout has proven to be the best combo when using the Eruptor on both enemy fronts. It's highly recommended to get the weapon alone from the Democratic Detonation Pack, and hopefully this review going over the weapon gives you an idea as to what to look forward to when using it and how to properly manage it within your loadout. So if you enjoyed today's video and want more of this in the future, be sure to subscribe and comment just so I can hear your thoughts. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.